Hey guys, I'm going to paint another little 4x4 cardinal painting. I was just watching the news and I need to take some time <laughs> and chill out. Here I'm showing you my watercolor pencils. I always write the word love on every canvas before I start painting. Uh, the watercolor just dissolves right into the acrylic paint. Um, there I have some cer cerulean, not sure if how you say that color, cerulean blue, uh, some unbleached titanium, neutral gray five, titanium white, and that little blob in the top right corner is hooker's green. Um, this is a paper, disposable paper palette I'm using. I thought I'd show you guys. Um, they're really convenient, easy to clean up. You just let the paint dry and you throw it away in the garbage. I'm using a little 3 8 inch filbert brush and just doing sort of a soft background. I'm hinting a little bit at sky, a little bit at what will be leaves in the background. I videoed this painting in little sections. Let me know if you like that. Um, I don't show every step. This video will be, oh, 18 to 20 minutes. A painting like this would take me three hours. And there I'm done with the background. This is an inch and a half thick gallery wrapped canvas. And I think I just said it was four inches by four inches. If I didn't, good thing I remembered. Oh, and I'm showing my little uh, water bottle that I missed paints with to help keep them a little dry. And then sometimes I just put a cup on top to save the painting for later. Or save the paint for later, not the painting. I've got my image on my canvas. I use some red charcoal and some black charcoal to mark it out um, just to help me differentiate what's the branch and what's the bird. Oh, and then I'm showing you, once the paint's dried, sometimes you can peel it off of the disposable palette paper. Um, instead of buying a pad of disposable palette paper, you could just use some wax paper. Tape it down. Works pretty good. And I'm showing you my colors. Red oxide. Um, Cadden red medium. And then CAD Red Light. Oh, and then my, I think I show this in every video. I love a kneaded eraser. It's only a dollar or so. And I just lighten up those um, pastel and charcoal lines. So they, I don't know, sometimes they can kind of get in the way a little bit. It's nice that they're a little lighter. They don't fight with your painting as much. With the actual paint, I guess I should say. When I had written the colors on the uh, paper palette, but then I misted it with water, so it made my handwriting run. That's just Mars Black at the very bottom there. I added a little bit of water to it because it was a little sticky, so now I'm just mixing the paint because you don't want it too thin. So on Cardinals, I like to start with the black face because I think it's important. You want to get that right. I'm using a little liner brush here. I've done quite a few videos now. Let, let me know what you guys like. Let me know what I could do better, what more you want from me, what questions you have. Um, the point of these videos is for you. I want you to enjoy them. I want you to get something out of them. Um, let me know what else I can do. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much. Putting a little of the feathers in there. I don't know if that'll show, but sometimes I get a little hung up on the details. Oh, now we're starting to block in some of the wing with some color. Mix a little red oxide with black to make it even a little darker. I 
This is an eighth inch little filbert brush. You could use a little angle brush. Um, if you wanted more impressionistic painting, use bigger brushes. Just offloading some paint on my brush here on the paper towel. I pretty much just kind of piece a painting together like a puzzle. I'll work on different areas, see what I like, see what I don't like. Um, values are important. So sometimes I'll jump around between the dark values and the light values to see how they're working. Oh, and brush stroke direction is important. You can see I'm following the direction of the feathers here. So while a cardinal doesn't have pink on it, um, I don't mind putting a little pink in there just to get more of, of a value change. Here I'm marking out the highlight on the beak. You could mix your reds. I like the speed of having the three different reds on my palette, but you could mix them. If any of you, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> a little dry today. If any of you have used a Stay Wet palette, let me know which one you like. I have never used one. I think that would be really handy. So here I'm thinking, and I don't know if I need to do this, but I'm thinking I want my lightest, brightest red right there where the, the sun is shining, but the background is so light. I don't know if underpainting it with white is gonna make much difference but it doesn't hurt to be safe. So that's why I'm putting the white down. Um, reds can be transparent. So this way the white will definitely block, block out the background. The light's pretty much coming from the top in this painting. So here I've switched to um, what used to be a Oh gosh, I can never remember if the flat brushes are the shorter bristles or the bright brushes are the shorter bristle brushes. Um, I've used this one so much, it's extra short. I've worn it down. <laughs> I think I've mentioned that in other, I know I've mentioned that in other videos. And here I'm not going the direction of the um, feathers. They're really short here, so I'm looking more for the curve that I can see in my reference photo on the bird on that part of the wing. Still kind of puzzling out where it's dark, where it's light, where it's red, where it's gray. Putting in some of the little, I don't know which, what those feathers are called. They're just under sort of the shoulder. So here I've put some darker marks that I can see on the stomach of the cardinal because since the red's kind of transparent, I can paint over them and they'll still be there. Adds a little more depth, a little more texture. So as I come around the top here, I want the reds brighter. I 
I like using a reference photo because you don't have to follow it. But if you get a little stuck, all the information's there. And then you can just do it better. Make the lighting better, make the texture better. I usually, I don't on purpose show my reference photos because I use several sites and I can't remember what's okay for me to show and what isn't. Um, I use sites like Unsplash, Pixabay, uh, Paint My Photo, which I think is pmp-art.com. Um, you can Google uh, Creative Commons Zero CCO photos to use for reference photos. You want to read their terms and, and service agreement because um, you want to make sure that they're photos that are okay to use or take your own. So here there's going to be a little light that comes up around the edges of the bird. So I've got a couple of little light feathers and indications there. So now that, that white's dried, I'm actually putting an almost pinkish color up there. And like I said, I mean, a cardinal doesn't have pink on it, but it helps give it more depth and shape. More values. Values, oh, I don't know if I've said this in a, a video before. Values are the lights and the darks. So it, really, I could paint this cardinal in purples. Uh, people might not like it because they want their cardinals to be red, at least here in the U.S. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there because that was kind of a weird comment. Um, yeah, values are everything. Oh, I'm getting farther. Oh, so now I'm going to put out a little Turner's yellow. It's kind of a muted, little darker yellow. It's not super bright. You can see it there. Because on my reference photo, the beak has kind of a yellow glow to it. And I wasn't quite getting it with the reds. And yellows are even more transparent than the reds, so I can um, paint right on top of the beak. Here I'm going to make a little bit of an orange. I think I'm using that little knife brush that I use quite a bit when I do these small paintings. Oh, so now I'm making a brown. It's out of the red oxide. I really took more black than I needed because I'm going to end up grabbing all of that yellow to brown it up. Black is really strong. Um, don't do as I do. Do as I say. Just grab a little bit at a time. So you don't end up with a big puddle of paint. So now I'm taking just a little bit of white to see if I like that brown so I can see it better. I think I came up with a nice creamy chocolate brown there. You could also just put some uh, burnt umber or something out on your palette. So you can see towards the bottom of the palette next to the black, in between the black and the white, I've got kind of a pinkish gray. I've used a little bit in his leg and I'm gonna use a little bit of that also in the branch. It won't look very pinky. Why don't you put it on the branch? But I think it's kind of nice. Ties it in a little bit better. Oh, there I picked up a little bit of the pink, but see it looks brown there because my brush is dirty. I'm just playing with the branch, horizontal strokes to make it look round, um, painting wet on wet until I start liking it. Oh, there we go. Things are looking pretty good. I 
So here I'm showing you what the matte medium looks like. I'm going to do some glazing to have hints of leaves in the background. And I put out more hooker's green and some unbleached titanium. And then I mix some um, different shades of those two colors. So then I grab the color, grab some matte medium, and then that's how you, uh, you would do glazing. In this case, it's going to be just light leaves, so they don't stand out. I want to make sure I want to make sure the cardinal is the the thing that comes the most forward on this painting. You can see if I get a little too much color, I offloaded it on the brush there, and just smeared it into my where the paint's wet. Lightened it a little bit. That's a three eighths inch filbert, which is what I used on the background. I'm also kind of following on purpose that leaf follows the direction of the cardinal and I'm going to have more leaves that come in and kind of point at the cardinal and you might not notice it but now that I've pointed it out you'll see it in the final painting and it just helps keep your eye on that cardinal which is the subject of this painting. So here I'm just kind of thinking about where I want the next leaf. Is this leaf long enough? So if you haven't already, before I forget, please subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, I've been just tickled pink about getting subscribers. YouTube was my place to store my videos so I could post them on social media. Um, so it's been a lot of fun for me. I really appreciate your support. Um, hit the bell to get notif notifications when I upload new videos. Um, and like it and comment, that helps so much too. And if you're on Facebook, your comments and shares mean so much to me and they help a lot. Commenting, liking on any social media platform helps me reach more people, which helps my art business. I can't thank you enough. So here I'm getting ready to sign it. Um, I've got a little liner brush. I've got a light green on it. And so I sign it with my initials A and T. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then next to the A under sort of or actually next to the bottom of the T, I put one dot for favorite son and one dot for favorite daughter. I put that on the front of all my paintings. I, it's my artist mark. And then on the back, I sign it. So that way all my paintings are consistent. It sort of has almost like a two-step authentication. You know, you know it's mine. It's got both the artist mark and the signature. Let me know what you think of this painting in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. Thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me. I'm looking forward to chatting with you on social media. Bye, guys.